So hello, uh, with travel making a comeback, we are talking about aviation today. We're also going to be talking about aerospace and with aerospace and aviation technologies, maybe talking with AvTech. Uh, those are the right people to talk to. So Ben Goff and Jason Watts are joining me today. Uh, ben, Jason, thanks for your time. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for having us, Kurt. Uh, so I'm curious to learn a little bit more about AvTech. I know it's a division of Fastenal, but like I said before, aviation is AvTech's, is it a foundational part of where you are? So let's start with aviation. Sure. Uh, AvTech Industries was founded in 1989 by a uh, young man named Alan Avery. Uh, this was his pet project, and uh, he found very quickly that uh, he could find a niche in uh, selling aviation hardware. Uh, what makes aviation hardware interesting for, for uh, us as a business is that there's a, a lot of, of quality requirements that uh, go into making sure that the parts that we supply are appropriate for being put on an airplane. I saw a fact floating around that I want to, uh, it was on the internet, so we'll take this with a grain of salt, but it must, uh, be, true. It must be true, exactly. <laughs> it was saying something along the lines of that on a 747, uh, there are 40,000 rivets on each wing. And I happen to know a little bit about planes myself, and I know that they have two wings. So if we're talking about a standard airplane, we're probably talking about 100,000, maybe even hundreds of thousands of rivets. And that just seems like a crazy amount of fasteners to me. And that isn't something where you can say, I think we have all the right ones attached. So does that, first of all, sound like a fair estimate for the number of rivets? And if so, how do all those connections get made during the build? Is, is someone inside the plane doing this by hand? Are they counting them? What is this process? Yeah, so there's a couple of things to that. One, I think that number is accurate, right? If you've ever sat on an airplane and looked out the window, I've been amazed at the number of rivets I can see just, just from looking out at the wing. One of the things that impresses me most about an airplane rivet is the method that goes into inspecting that rivet to make sure that it meets the qualifications, right? So from a fastener perspective, you look at it, and you go, oh, yeah, like you said, I think this is right. But when you hand a rivet to a quality assurance person, they've got no fewer than 20 inspection points that they have to certify this rivet meets the standard, right? That was the thing that got me when I was watching some of the quality guys one day, uh, just kind of mentoring and learning the business, watching them go through and inspect a rivet. It sounds like such a simple thing, but when you go to the bubble drawing and really look at all the critical points that are on there, everything that has to be verified before we can then pass that down to um, a customer, it's really impressive to see that go through. So I think I'm going to take a stab here at oversimplifying what AvTech is doing, but it feels like you guys are working with aviation companies to become a part of their supply chain. Is that yes or no question there? Is that accurate? That's oh, a yeah. very fair yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you can tell us a little bit about what you're seeing in the industry, where might it be heading? Oh, man. All right. That's a great question. Um, so uh, up is the easy answer, right? So aviation is heading up. So certainly on the commercial aviation, we're seeing an, an uptick in travel. Uh, the, a lot of the layoffs have been postponed. Air, airlines are calling people back. As a matter of fact, right now they're having trouble get, getting everybody back, right? So we're seeing some cancellations, but overall uptick on commercial travel, um, a massive uptick in private jet ownership and purchasing, right? That was one I didn't really see coming. That's not a world that I live in. Uh, I wish it was, but it's not. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then we're also seeing, uh, if I look forward beyond just kind of commercial and private aerospace, what are we looking at, right? So there is vertical takeoff and lift aircraft, right? It's a mouthful of words, but I'll, what it really is, it's like the flying cars that we were promised so many years ago, right? So imagine a human-sized drone that can pick you up at one spot in an urban area and fly you pilotless to another spot, right? Urban air taxis is another way to think about it. Those are super cool. I've seen multiple examples. Uh, there's actually one down in Austin that's um, building these aircraft for entertainment. You can take a 30 minute class on how to fly this thing, go out there, they put you in it, you can fly inside a geofenced area for half an hour and you get to fly your own human sized drone. How cool. Yeah, sign me up. Yeah, yeah. So if you're looking to sign up for things, then the next level of sign up would be human space flight, right? Putting humans back in space on uh, on spacecraft. 
And the, what's really cool about what's happening right now is you're seeing this absolute collaboration between uh, the public sector of NASA and those types of companies partnering with private sector companies, um, SpaceX, Blue Origin, Firefly, yeah, Firefly, uh, Virgin lots, Galactic, yeah, yeah, Virgin Galactic, lots of different companies. And so that's the new the new term is space tourism, right? So if you want to sign up for something, you and Bezos can take that first flight. I'm a few million dollars short of joining Mr. Bezos. Uh, we'll have to do a really big Kickstarter for me. Yeah. Uh, I, you mentioned NASA. I can't help but think that we're seeing more and more news around uh, aviation, sure, but then space, you kind of mentioned it, it's just ballooning. I mean, NASA's got a helicopter on Mars. China just put a rover on Mars. We're seeing... Uh, in the past few decades, I feel like there was almost like a, a drought of information, and now we're seeing this huge uptick. What kind of, how are you helping those companies that are in aerospace? So a lot of it has to do with being able to uh, partner with a company, uh, work with their, uh, not only their design and development teams, but their production teams as well, and find a solution that really uh, streamlines their their process. Uh, any Anytime where you can uh, be there and, and have what they need when they need it. Mm -hmm. uh, you're saving them time, you're saving them money, and that allows them to focus on what they're good at, which is putting stuff in, in space. I like the sound of that. So you're basically, again, this is me putting words in your mouth, so correct me where I go wrong, but you're basically becoming a part of the supply chain that they can rely on in order to save time and money. Yeah, absolutely. What's one example of that? Do you have anything that you can share? Is it all top secret? <laughs> well, we can tell you. Uh, we won't finish that. Yeah, I, I think one thing that's not top secret that's really cool is um, whenever SpaceX did their their big first launch of their rocket a few months ago, uh, they did a shot of from the nose cone looking out over the landscape there in Florida, and down in the background you could see a blue Fasenal trailer. <laughs> we, were there. we were we were there, so. This sounds like a really interesting field. We're, we're talking about space, aviation. In general, what's new and interesting in your field? You mentioned the VTOLs, as I used to hear them referred to. Are they all the rage? Is there anything else that's new and different? That's the, the biggest one where it comes to man flight um, or, or carrying humans. Yeah. Uh, you know, the uh, military has been doing a lot of uh, uh, experimentation with drones and really growing that technology a lot. Yeah. One thing that I'm really excited about that, that I didn't know was coming until we kind of ran across some customers who needed some help, and that is electric aircraft, right? So we know about electric cars, Tesla and others, and everybody's kind of adopting that. The next big thing is going to be regional electric aircraft. We've got a couple of different companies that we're working with that are uh, getting involved in that. So that's really cool. And again, something I didn't see coming, not, or I would have thought it was further away, but it's just right around the corner. One of the companies we're working with, they just finished their first uh, FAA test flight a few months ago, and they're ramping up production to, to full speed here in the next few months. That is just crazy to me. I, it makes perfect sense. It's a common, uh, or not a common, but it makes sense logically, like that's where this would be going, this technology. The idea that with VTOLs and electric planes, we're heading towards the Jetsons. This is just blowing my mind, you guys. No. I, I think I covered this multiple times, but I want to hear it in your own words. As a supply chain partner, how do you help these aviation and aerospace companies? So one of the first things we provide is peace of mind. Uh, we are uh, making sure that they can rely on the product that we are providing. Uh, we're taking the extra steps. We're uh, making sure that the manufacturers are, are providing a, a full range of test reports. What we don't want to find out is that a part is the wrong part after it's already been installed and the, and the, the craft is in flight. Um, so that's the, that's the first thing we offer. And then the second thing we offer is really um, a range of solutions. Uh, you know, we're, we're looking for ways to partner with our customers, uh, provide them a supply chain expert that's able to uh, work with them and, and tailor a, uh, a method to, to really help them get the most efficiency out of their supply chain. Mm -hmm. When you take the aerospace quality management system that we have, which is called the AS9120, that means we're a certified aerospace distributor. When you take that piece 
and you partner it with all of the amazing solutions that Fastenal has with regards to supply chain, when you put those two things together, it's really a compelling offering for um, customers in the aerospace mill spec industry. It really is the best of both worlds. Well, guys, I think I've taken enough of your time. It sounds like you have interesting and important things to get to. Uh, thanks for talking today. Yeah, thank you. Kurt. Thanks, Kurt. Have a great day. Yep.